Welcome to the Belco experiment. Basically, Squid Game before it was cool, and nobody gets paid. Terrifying. Welcome to Bogota, Colombia. Our white collar protagonist is Mike Milch. It's a tough commute to work, but at least the market offers some entertainment. And what do we have here? That's right, capitalism. Welcome to Belco Industries. Today is a special day. Security is new and improved, and for whatever reason, other employees are denied entry. This is the CEO of the company, Barry Norris, but even he doesn't understand the heightened security. We then catch a glimpse of the other employees of Belco. A Spanish version of I Will Survive plays as we witness a preview of the different personalities at work, from friendly to respectful to chill to disdain to ass-kissing. Add a little suspense and foreshadowing, and our story officially begins. The HR guy Vince welcomes a newly hired employee, Danny. Company ID, credit card, phone, car, apartment? Damn, Belco doesn't hold back with the benefits. They even put GPS trackers on their employees. It's for insurance, to prevent kidnappings and nothing else. Wink, wink. Belco's a huge, successful company, but what does it do exactly? Belco is a nonprofit organization that facilitates American companies in South America in the hiring of American workers. Okay, that's cool. But this guy, Wendell, not so much. Wendell creeping on his coworker, Leandra, ain't cool at all. Especially because she has a boyfriend. Mike's handcrafted gift isn't well received. Mike, it looks like someone's eat enough of it. Though it might be disgusting enough to ward off Wendell's unwanted advances. Let's close the curtain as we demonstrate an advantage of really liking a coworker. Mm. <laughs> and a disadvantage. Hey, Barry. That's HR for you both. Not really. Barry's a cool boss, and you'll soon realize how powerless HR is in this office. The office looks understaffed today. Maybe they're also trying out the work from home setup. Anyway, our new girl is already getting some attention. Then Mike starts missing the others, so he asked Terry. Apparently, the Colombian nationals were sent home at the gate. Mike, you should come to the rainforest. That's right, they come right up and stroke them. They're delicious. Uh, okay. Hmm, that person looks suspicious. So Mike calls Evan. Who sent the locals home, and why are the new guards hanging in the hangar? Evan doesn't know much, but it was Central's orders to send the locals home. He's gonna go check in on the new guards, but then... I want to play a game. Oh god. Shh. The voice isn't actually Jigsaw. There are no elaborate traps, puzzles, or masks. It's a game of Simon Says. Their first task? Murder any two of your fellow employees within the next half hour. Who and how is up to them. But if there are no two dead bodies, you will face repercussions. Naturally, the ladies panic. Just kidding, only this one. The higher-ups like Mike take charge and follow protocol. Calm everyone down, evacuate, use the stairs, all that stuff. While the others make fun of the announcement. Also, Danny starts looking constipated. Suddenly, a late employee dashes for the exit, but then the building transforms. The entire building is encased in metal. The office phones don't work, reception is gone, and there's no exit. They all eventually gather on the first floor and make sense of things. Mike gets closer to Bud, the head of maintenance. Anyway, we can get through that metal? Maybe smash the walls? Blowtorch, maybe. The walls, no. This metal surrounds the entire building. Bud still takes Lonnie to get the blowtorch, while others head for the roof. But before that, boss man does boss things and composes his employees. It's a government building and Barry thinks someone hacked into their system and is just playing games. Doing a little trolling, as we like to say. There's no need to panic, just chill out. I'm gonna go work on that and I'll circle back to you as soon as I can. Bud and Lonnie test out the blowtorch to no avail. The metal isn't even heating up, but the employees are. Whoever imprisoned them shut off the air conditioning. But a little water should help. Unfortunately, Mike is paranoid, believing what the voice said. He brings up the loss of phone reception and the guard he saw. So what do you say? We should pick out a couple folks to kill? Well, Mike actually does have experience with that. Yep, same actor. Barry is joking, for now. There's no need to overreact, so everyone can just cool down with water. At the rooftop, Marty and his friends are chilling. Don't panic, it's organic. Danny's friends aren't as peaceful and instead calls on the attention of the guards at the station. He simply hits them with the, I missed the part where that's my problem, look. Marty gives them some perspective. This is totally a social experiment, man. It's a test. Look at me. Look how chill I am. They lose, man. I fucking win. Your friend's looking terrible there. <laughs> that is one explosive test. All hell breaks loose inside. Meanwhile, Barry turns into a head inspector. And not the fun kind. That's not a bullet one. The explosion came from inside. Mike immediately realizes that it must be the trackers inside them. The locals were sent home because they don't have them. As Mike sprints off, Bud arms himself and Lonnie. Watch my back. Leandra tries calming down her hysterical boyfriend, but Mike decides to play by himself in the bathroom. He attempts to cut the tracker out. Sad to say, the voice sees everything. Hey, that's cheating. Stop it. We will give you 10 seconds to cease and desist. The countdown proves effective. Two. Mike gets stitched up as Wendell creeps on his girlfriend. 
Terry and Vince tear up in the bathroom and dismantle a few cameras. This was planned from the very beginning. Meanwhile, Barry comforts Evan. He's lost his closest friend. The perfect time for manipulation. You have a key to that armor, right? I should hold on to that. Keep the gun safe. Barry's I'm your boss move doesn't work. Evan quits on the spot and Barry is shook. I didn't think he could use that move. The other employees cope in different ways. Marty's chill attitude is long gone while Danny found herself a nice hideout. Lonnie, on the other hand, is losing it. Bud wants to fix the AC before things get worse, but... This game is a real one. Do not dismantle the cameras, we're streaming. And no more cheating, okay Mike? If you break the rules, it's game over. There are 76 people left. In two hours, we want 30 of you dead. If not, 60 people will die. I'd say they're taking it well. No one's killing anyone. Yet. Guys, the wolves show themselves while the sheep run and hide. Ah! Marty has the brilliant idea of setting off the alarm to alert the fire department. However, this does not calm anyone down. The kitchen mayhem is getting worse. Boss man takes control. I'm protecting myself, Mike. But better safe than sorry. Then we're hit with even more bad news as Evan reveals that the fire alarm doesn't reach the fire department. Meanwhile, Lonnie has gone hysterical and believes Bud to be behind everything. Wait a sec. That's one makeover no one's gonna like. Look at the top of this man's head. As Evan shuts down the alarm, I see you. Danny must have put all her stats on luck. Lonnie keeps missing and eventually... 28 more to go. Cutting back to the kitchen, Mike takes the moral high ground. We are not going to entertain the option of killing people. But Barry wants to discuss all options, and even Leandra agrees. Luckily, the majority of the employees are on Mike's side. Besides, I can't really believe they're going to let anybody live to tell the tale. We're all going to die. Barry breaks the silence. He's convinced it will at least buy them time. Okay, I just want to kill people. Just kidding. Leandra then suggests, we'll drape banners all over the building. It's not a practical solution, as Barry calculates it'll take way too f***ing long. Seven 75% of us will die if it doesn't work. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. Not all of us are special forces. That explains Barry's cold, calculated approach to their dire situation. Cooler heads prevail as Mike rallies the others to work on Leandra's banners, leaving the big boys on their own. Barry recruits Terry into his cause. All it takes is one word, family. Yes. Never underestimate the power of family. As we reminisce on the value of family, Marty has the genius idea of wasting water. Water's making us crazy, man. Yeah, all of that happens while Mike turns into an emotional wreck. I can't believe you want to kill people. The circumstances do not alter what is right and what is wrong. Suddenly, Leandra notices the missing blowtorch. There it is, in the armory with the big boys. We need to keep these weapons safe. We're totally not going to use them to uh, execute everyone. Damn. Well, that escalated quickly. You feeling lucky, punk? Man, he's just itching to pull that trigger. Mike, however, isn't a hypocrite, so he doesn't want anyone shooting anyone. Scratch that. Also, how did that not explode? I mean, it is a movie. Things tend to explode when you shoot them. Unfortunately, Mike's actions only strengthens Barry's resolve. That was hardcore, bro. Leandra isn't as happy. They now have targets on their backs. That was a stupid move. The banners are coming out nicely. It just might work. My advice? Put a picture of a hot girl on there. Clickbait always works. Mike goes ahead and warns everyone that Barry and his goons are going against them. Yeah, no, especially. Leandra has a sit down with her boyfriend, grounding him to reality. Are you stupid? Did you not see how big they are? Right or wrong, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, people are out for themselves. Mike doesn't have a compelling rebuttal. All he can do is... They go ahead with their plan while other employees lose their shit. <laughs> Understandable. At the rooftop, Mike's team hangs up the banner, but then... I don't know what they were expecting, but Mike doesn't accept defeat, even when the other guy gets wounded. He asks for another helping hand, but... Please cease and desist. Your heads will explode if you do that again. Mike's stubbornness nearly gets him killed, but the others are not willing to risk it. They retreat, and it's time for Mike to have a breakdown. It's this job, this building, this isolated location. They planned all this from the beginning. Mike, you're saying that the government's the one that's doing this. Belko does work for the government, and it seems they've never cared for any of Belko's actual work. Leandra is shook, and in disbelief. There's just no way the government would conduct such a barbaric human experiment. They head downstairs, only to get ambushed. He's gonna get a lot of people killed. Like this guy. All that for the armory keys. And he's a pervert. Don't you call me pervert. Says the pervert. They leave Evan bleeding and finally get hold of all the sweet guns they need. Barry passes the guns to his goons, but holds on to most of the bullets. Because I'm the one that's gonna do this. What exactly? We're about to find out as he orders everyone to gather in the lobby. Nobody move. Now everybody move. Oh look, Danny gets spotted again, but she's left alone. Okay. We cut back to Mike regaining consciousness, only to find a dead Evan. 27 more to go. At the lobby, Leandra witnesses her co-workers rounded up like cattle for slaughter. Mike joins the party, and with everyone gathered, Barry segregates the employees to be killed. Boomers? Dead. They have less than 20 minutes before 60 heads pop, so he rationalizes and defends his decision. 
Any more volunteers? Because they only have seven people. Unfortunately, no. So he starts picking them based on nothing. I'm not going. Oh wait, there's a volunteer. Damn, Wendell, you gotta learn to save bullets. Then Mike gets picked, which is kind of inevitable. They turn on the radio to drown out the massacre with some sweet tunes. Barry composes himself and the execution officially begins. Wendell counts down as Barry emotionally and hesitantly pops one head after another. Understandable. Mike does his best to get Terry to his side, but Terry's a crying little bit. All the while, Danny has been scurrying beneath them and messing with various switches, and then... Perfect timing. Plot armor does its job, and Mike gets away. Barry and his goons keep shooting, though, and somehow don't shoot each other in the dark. Amidst the chaos, Danny and Blue Suit Guy have the smart idea of climbing on top of the elevator. The other big boys chase after the escapees, but it leads to their end. Mike gets tired of being a beta and fights this huge bear of a man, while Vince proves me wrong and shows just how powerful HR truly is. Not to mention the other employees seeking revenge. Mike, on the other hand, should thank the old lady for finishing the job. I don't know about you guys, but I've lost count of the dead bodies. So has Barry, and he doesn't care. Don't count, just go. The voice chimes in, and they only need one more. Two minutes remaining. Leandra got separated, but she sure knows how to take care of herself. Kill one more person in the next 120 seconds. Terry sneaks in, unaware of the danger awaiting him. Down and disarmed, he has no choice but to grovel at Leandra's feet. Kind of kinky. Please don't hurt me, I'm innocent. I was just following orders. <laughs> His pleas are super effective. Leandra drops her weapon. Unfortunately, you've come up one body short. Say bye bye to 31 more employees. No! Let the fireworks begin. Chaos is an understatement. Heads explode, and all they can do is cry. Marty stays chill, though. It's not real. It's all in my mind. It's all in my mind. Okay, never mind. Only plot armor can save you now. It stopped. They, they stopped. Or not, but it seems Mike's good luck charm saved this lady. It's getting dark outside, so it's time for the final stage. In one hour, whoever has killed the most people will be allowed to live. And just like that, you're now watching Fortnite the movie. Barry has 11, Wendell 7, Vince 1, and Danny 1. To be fair, it was self-defense. Wendell doesn't even have to think about it and just starts hacking away. HR has reclaimed its authority and is down to get dirty. Meanwhile, Barry is in the lead so he can have a little fun. Look, Mr. Norris. Oh yeah. You can have me if you want. Give me the bullet. Oh, well, goddamn. Very practical. Looks like Wendell's also in a hurry. Bleach should clean all of that up. Danny and Blue Suit run into trouble as Barry steps in their elevator. Danny's plot armor beats special forces training, but it's a tight squeeze for the Blue Suit guy. On the bright side, the elevator jabs. Thank you for your sacrifice. Back to Leandra, who's back at the lobby. Marty and his friend are collecting the explosives from people that were shot to blast through the metal casing. It's a good idea, right? Right? Marty's laid-back attitude is all gone. Leandra agrees and moves on to the intercom. They'll know where we are. Some of these people are total dicks. That's putting it kind of lightly. She announces her location and calls out to her boyfriend. Mike, I'm on the first floor. Can you please come? Meanwhile, Barry's training kicks in while Mike goes to his girlfriend, grabbing an old lady and his little doll along the way. We come back to Leandra, who just made it to the kitchen. There's a, there's a joke in there somewhere. She bears witness to Wendell butchering his friend. What? I gotta catch up to Barry. He's got the high score. Unfortunately, Wendell is a much better shot, taking everyone else out until... Ah! Here's an ax to the face, times 10. She violently finishes the job and finally meets Mike. <laughs> also, Danny's still kicking, and whether it's skill or luck, she makes it to a different elevator. Mike sees the bombs Marty collected and takes them for himself. Just as things cool down, Vince finds a way to heat things up, literally. Down goes another old lady as the couple try their luck up the stairs, only they meet a trigger happy Barry. A few pew pews and HR is down for the count. Then, more bad news strikes for Mike. Leandra got shot, and Barry still has bullets, which he's saving especially for him. Meanwhile, Danny pops out of the elevator only to get popped herself. Damn, I've been rooting for her the whole movie. Mike manages to escape and hide, still holding on to Leandra. Let me get us out of here. I love you. I love you too. Unfortunately, words of encouragement are not enough to bring her back from the dead. She bleeds out. Only two people remain. Mike finds the strength to burst out of the locker as Barry misses. Paper pusher versus special forces. Let's go. You killed her! Anger and courage just aren't enough against Barry's training. Then, a little push accidentally turns on a Belko presentation. It enthusiastically ensures that the 40 offices it's running trains its employees to face all the challenges an office provides. It's time to demonstrate that training, Mike. Not only boy. Mike puts Barry's training to shame as he clinches his boss's head. So much for teamwork in the office. Didn't change a damn thing. All I can hear is winner, winner, chicken dinner. And a necessary slow-mo shot ends Barry's life and the experiment altogether. Congratulations, Mr. Moch. Mike is the last man standing. He's escorted to the hangar and we finally meet the man behind the voice. And I see he has a face made for radio. As the movie title suggests, this was all an experiment. 
conducted by an international organization composed of geniuses who want to study human behavior. Unfettered by conventional concepts. They've collected the data. All that remains is the survivor's interview. Just answer the questions and you can leave. How do you feel? A. Sad. B. Relieved. C. Confused. D. You've been watching us this entire time and didn't notice the bombs I took? I put them on all of you. Oh shit, Mike is slick. <coughs> Mike, the new alpha and number one Fortnite player, looms over his victims. Then, the guy with the weird face starts yapping. You believe life is sacred? Yeah? It's all over now. Commence stage two. Whoa. Well, goddamn, that's a lot of experimentation. Moral of the story? Workplace shenanigans are no laughing matter.